favorite squirty show. A great squirty show. Don't you know? That's right. Welcome back to another episode of the Grievance Gordy Show. And that's me. <laughs> I'm Grievance Gordy. Why? Because I was in a band called the Grievance Committee back in the 1980s, back when I had a different view of the world. Right? I'm 56 years old now. And I was victimized, past tense, by a bunch of partisans and racists on the Facebook app. Absolutely, 100%. It involved people that I know, and worse, the worst part about it, it involved people that who didn't even know me. Based on rumor and innuendo. And these people will get got. That's right. I don't care about the present day. Right? Um, I care about the future. I think a lot of us do. I have a second channel, it's called Fallen Angelinos, where I talk about being homeless. I am homeless. And I've been homeless basically since I left uh, the place of nightmares at Six Mile and Chalmers in Detroit in 1985. I started working at a record shop who didn't want to hire me based on race. This was told to me firsthand. Okay. What I tell you are, are firsthand accounts of my life. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get comfortable. It's 11 o'clock and I'm homeless and I sleep in the car. My domineering mother made me buy. Uh, no one in my family listens to me ever. Not ever, not once. Uh, I got into a really good conversation with one of my sisters. I have three sisters and a domineering mother. I was brought up with all women in my household. Uh, assumptions, capital A-S-S, assumptions were made about my uh, race, about my sexuality, all this kind of stuff. And it's all flagrant projection. Right? I believe through anthropology that they're finding a lot of things out about where people actually do come from. And it's actually opening up a Pandora's box of more, even more mysteries. Right? We're considered Lumbee Native, First American. I knew all of the East Coast uh, Native Americans, a lot of them are mixed with African American. And then most people, when you take a DNA test, you'll find that you're mixed too. <laughs> you don't know what you're mixed with. So the hierarchy isn't racially oriented. Sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to find my good side and I don't have one. <laughs> uh, it is class. We all know this. And so through the media, which is the <laughs> this which is the dirty little part of social media, aside from the fact that they're using it to crank the algorithms to uncomfortable levels. Right? I've experienced this firsthand, guys. And it will come to pass that you will find out uh, that I will be vindicated for everything that I say. If I called you out by name, let's do a Zoom call. Come on my show, right? They can't, they won't, because they know their involvement. The involvement in my torture included people that I knew and people that I thought were my friends. And um, you will get got, make no mistake about it. So I believe what they were trying to insinuate was that I was indoctrinated by the internet. Oh, how interesting how you can have this label about indoctrination on, on the internet on one side but there's no ind indoctrination on the other side. What did we talk about before? The pendulum swings, my friend. The pendulum doth swingeth. <laughs> yeah, I study Shakespeare. I get into a lot of things like uh, Shakespeare now that I am 56. When I was an actor in New York, and I was, and by an actor, I mean, you know, you get a headshot, you mail it out. Back then, we used to mail it out and uh, send it around and you go on auditions and then they call you back and you book a job. Uh, much of what I did is in the archives of New York University. 
if they archived it correctly. I did a uh, I did a film with my wife. And I thought she was a creative person. The most creative bone my 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 wife had in her body was mine. And I don't have any problem saying it because she was definitely utilizing this technology. They utilize your smartphone to interfere with your you know, your I want to say brainwaves. I call it EEG technology. It's how you can measure your brainwaves, whether they're in a theta state or an alpha state. They can scramble this. Now, again, yesterday I was talking about, can it make you kill? Can it make you commit, you know, the S word, which you can't say, which is why that show got buried. I don't care. I'm not here for hits and I'm not here to make money. If you check the uh, comment section, or I'm sorry, my community posts, you can see how far away I am from ever getting monetized. When you do something for money, it never works out, right? Sometimes you get lucky like I did when I got $20,000 from uh, COVID and I was able to leave this job that was a bunch of guys lying to my face and I don't appreciate it. Running game on me, knowing that they were using the Facebook app, noting, knowing that I was on Bolo federally Oh, yeah. It runs much deeper than that. Right now, I'm in a tent city area over on La Cienega and Pico. And what I'm noticing is that they'll allow things to just continue to grow, continue to grow out of control. People are making messes over there, right? And don't forget, I was accosted when I set up my tent by a guy. And then here comes a bunch of Bill Hillies. This was the same M.O. of somebody down in North Carolina. They have the same game. They keep running the same game. I told you guys yesterday about how they were running game. Uh, the guy mentioned it at Amazon. Right? I know what running game is. It's pretty fucking weak. Right? Um, so, this tent city, it's kind of growing out of control. Now, all of a sudden, the people start acting out. There's a guy over there. He's acting out right now. And now what you're going to do, the whole thing's going to come crushing down. The people who go over there are going to start acting out. And you're going to start using this base part of your skull instead of the frontal lobe. Right? Like we we're talking about anthropology. Right? The Neanderthal versus Cro-Magnon versus modern man. Right? And they're finding out it's interesting I'm in Los, Los Angeles right now. And so you have this trope of the golden surfer, the golden dude bro guy, right? They call them the golden god, right? This blonde haired surfer bro. Well, as it turns out on Catalina Island, they found evidence of giants on Catalina Island. Check out Robert Sepper right here on YouTube. I get most of my information from YouTube and from the library. Oh, sorry about that, my Googles. <laughs> yeah, please, please, my Googles, please don't take my show away. Ba ba ba. Abba Jekyll Jekyll Naka Stewart says. See, I'm back. Oh, 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 my Googles. Right. I'm all about surfing the eggiverse. What's egregore? Egregore is the living being inside your computer that's controlling everything. Like a David Lynch movie, right? Right? I haven't seen David Lynch in quite a while. I hope he's doing okay. He usually gives the weather report. I hope he's on vacation enjoying himself, enjoying his life. He's a great artist and he's very inspirational. I came up in the time of midnight movies. That's when I came up. That's why I love interesting ideas as far as cinema goes. I like, um, you know, they have now, they have Stranger Things. So I came up with the internet of Stranger Things, right? And I had this concept all the way back in the 90s that's provable through archiving uh, at David Mamet's, well, it's not, it's, it's his Atlantic Theater Company uh, summer retreat in, sorry guys, I gotta be comfortable. I don't care about the lighting. Um, oh look, it's Rosie Greer. Right? It's a man with two heads. Um, I went with his, it, it, to do his summer retreat one, one summer. Skeet Ulrich was around back then. Um, 
when I went to New York and started auditioning, Polly from NCIS was around. She was doing a lot of small time stuff. Uh, this was before I, she did a national commercial. Uh, there was another guy, um, you know, who did a lot of voiceovers. He was around, uh, you know, and this was my milieu back then. And so this is the pre-internet. That's what I call the BC era before computers. And things were done, I would call it analog, through analog. I was mailing out headshots. I was doing all this kind of stuff. I was getting all this training. Why? I don't know. I'm a songwriter. I'm a writer. Uh, my writing, uh, I, don't, I don't write overtly loquacious uh, using flowery language like that. I just don't do that. I don't fill in a lot of detail. What I do is I kind of like work like dub reggae. I kind of work like tarot cards and dub, dub reggae where your mind begins to fill in the blanks, right? Where um, you're, you become part of what I'm doing, right? You become part of this. You become part of the story. Why? Because why am I calling somebody defining their race when my book is going to be read, uh, my fiction rather, is going to be read by people maybe around the world and they want to use their minds. They're going to be picturing people in their milieu performing, uh, being the antagonist or the protagonist in one of my stories, right? So I just kind of leave that stuff out. I leave it up to your imagination, right? <laughs> And I got this notion from like reading treatments when I worked at Propaganda and Satellite Films and stuff like that, right? So I believe part of the reason I was targeted was because of things that I was looking at. Like I said in my other episode, Cicada 33, no fun, right? You have the, it was called 01, right? 3301, well ones and zeros are what? It's the computer guys. Cicada is on a 17 year cycle. You also have your circadian rhythm, which is gonna keep you up at night, right? So that's what they were doing. They were tapping into the 17th letter on both sides. I mean, it's kind of quite obvious. I, I've, I've even seen a meme about it. I watch Benny Will's meme show every Monday. It's a great meme show. It makes me laugh because I'm not online anymore and I'll never go back on Facebook. And Elon Musk busted these fed rats and these fed rats have been up my ass uh, ever since I dated a low level ecstasy dealer from the Gambino crew. This is my personal proof about this cabal within the FBI. They take over the rackets, you understand? And things have to change. And so they could get fired, but then they'll still use their contacts, right? I hate to bring up somebody's name because I really like this guy. I like him as a director. I like him as an actor. But he brought up uh, very infamously uh, about having someone whacked and taken out. And he brought up guys in the FBI. That's who he specifically said. Right? These are the guys responsible for the quote unquote fun and games. That's what they call it. Uh, murder and mayhem. Setting people up. And I don't appreciate being put on the beat. I didn't cross one person. The only person I ever crossed, I talked to this person numerous times. <laughs> I talked to them numerous times, right? So how come they don't know about that? They can't because they need to vilify you. I was targeted out on the street. That's why I try to tell you, they try to turn me not into Malcolm X, but to Malcolm Sex. That's how dumb and base these motherfuckers are. They'll do anything, why? because they're obsequious Philistines. I told you this before. They have a limited amount of brain space. I'm just telling you, man, you can grow out of that. I did. When was I nihilistic? I was nihilistic back when I was a, you know, a teenager going into young adult, right? And this drinking and this nihilistic behavior extended a little bit too long. I, I wanted to get married I wanted to get married numerous times throughout my life, right? Because who doesn't want to be with a power couple? Uh, so I was talking about Amber Heard and uh, Johnny Depp. Now I explained before that there's a pretty big age gap 
But guess what? Number one, women are smarter than men. This is a common trope that we all talk about. Number two, she's been around. She dated, I think, Roger Taylor from Duran Duran. You know how long that is? What kind of money, what kind of gravitas does that guy have? Those guys haven't had a hit record since forever. Who knows? Maybe they're on the touring circuit. Maybe they make money overseas. Uh, that's my understanding. I could be wrong. Uh, I try to use my conscious, what I can remember. I think remembering things is important. I think using your memory is important. I, you used to have to do it as an actor. That's why the natural transition from songwriter, <laughs> right? Not just a... Um, what a phony. You see this guy? You're, you're not supposed to walk back here. See, they see me doing... Ugh, whatever. Losers. Um, I had a natural transition from being a songwriter, not just a fucking musician, to a actor where I'm memorizing dialogue. I did this all before the age of 25 in Detroit. Make no mistake about it. And I believe it's these same obsequious Philistines from that area who glommed on in addition to uh, these fed rats. They could work for the federal government and they'll rat your name out and that's it. And they work with gangs on the street. I explained this before. It's a different skill to be a songwriter. Not everybody can do it. They can't. And the songs that I write actually have hooks. I don't put scales in my songs. Why? Because I never took guitar lessons. I had a fear of men. Why? Because I was molested at a young age. And I was so afraid from this molestation that people still laugh about it to this day. They think it's hilarious. They think it's hilarious targeting my family. They think it's so funny. People like James Willard Mush. Hey, Mush. How's it going, man? Yeah, I remember this guy down in the basement uh, at uh, 1313 Winder, huh? Along with Clifton. Yeah, I remember you, man. Yeah, I remember you. So, again, I had all these people from the past, like, just shit-talking me, calling me Zoolander for so many fucking years, when the fact is, I had the talent. I had the talent, but... They try to suppress it using neuro-linguistic programming. This is what my wife used. That's right. My wife wanted to see me dead. There is no doubt. That's pretty brutal. The women in my family, they don't give a fuck if, I, if I'm alive or dead at all. My own mother didn't want me to come home when I had nowhere to go and I was being crushed with this algorithm. Right? This is what they this is the excuse they make. They try to say that you're indoctrinated on the internet. Uh, let me tell you how it works. You can look up whatever the fuck you want on the internet. But once you're targeted, you're targeted. And like I said, I was targeted long before that. My family was targeted right in our neighborhood. They couldn't wrap their minds around the fact that we were Lumbee native, first American. Right? I'm not African American. When I walk into a room, ain't nobody going to say, look at the black guy. I mean, it's kind of fucking obvious, isn't it? No one would say that about my mother either. I was in the same bars as my father. I was in them with some guy named Dan. He was calling me Zoolander. Well, guess what? He's, none, he's one of these motherfuckers who can't handle their dope. His heart exploded. He's a fucking poser. He's filled with tattoos uh, and, and little else. You understand? Back in my day, you call a person like that a poser. But I guess once you get tattoos and once time changes enough, you know, uh, again, this guy's talking to me like he fucking knows me. Right? And a lot of people make this kind of, kind of mistakes. Right? So you got people breaking into your computer, people that I've named before. And I'll continue to name you. And you can suppress my channel. You can give me as, mon as many strikes as you want. I'll start another channel. This is for archive purposes. How many Lumbies have their own channel like this? Not many. When I was at the American Commun Indian Community House, where I got work as an actor, <laughs> right? Um, where we were doing plays about blowing up Mount Rushmore. 
which you could probably sell to Netflix today, but of course they put up another monument there since then. Okay. Um, anyways, I, I was going, yeah, I get heated, man. Uh, I'm angry. I had not one person in my family could show me the dignity and respect as to say, hey, Gordon, yeah, let's watch a movie together. Let's hang out together. They took somebody else's side in a family that's not even part of ours and threw me out of my sister's wedding. I've been persona non grata in my own family since day one. And here I am around my friends on Facebook. Not one of them are my friend. Not one. Not one. They've been shit talking me for years. Jason Clifton used the same MO as Nick Mama's Boy Cantopolis from Queens, New York, police officer buddy. Uh, who's all pop? I call them pop marks and skid marks. I ninety five with feet. These guys are pathetic. They show up under fake accounts and they don't think that they can get got. The guy I was talking about, James Willard Mush, is uh, Jason Clifton's friend. He knows exactly what's going on. People like him, scumbags. Oh yeah, again. These guys, they can't write songs. And for a person like me to write songs, we were targeted in the, the Detroit punk rock scene 1,000 motherfucking percent. They had to shut us down. Our songs were better. Uh, you know. And again, I thought there was room for everybody. I was kicked out of my fucking family years before my sister's marriage. Years before that. All right? It's called the big kiss off. I'm getting ready to post uh, one of my another one of my stories on Amazon, right? And um, again, I've been in Los Angeles for a year, and uh, I could talk all about what I've been put through since I got here as well. Uh, people targeting me. There is something out there. It might be on world world star hip hop. Uh, I've been set up numerous times by uh, white gangs, by black gangs. These people are pathetic. Like I said, they're, they're taking orders from anybody. But the fact is, the orders come from the police department. And that's what these guys don't understand. And that's why they get dupes and a bunch of phonies to actually to go out on the streets and carry out their bidding. They don't even understand who they're, they're, they're getting orders from. And it's just really sad when you get targeted. Again, like I said, I'm an original liberal Tarian. <laughs> I'm the most liberal person of all. They were targeting me for stuff that I was looking at. And it I call it mind rape. That's what I call it. And it's pretty brutal. And um, I'm probably the only person who will ever talk about it. And I don't have a problem with talking about it. So like I said, I'm a songwriter. I can actually write a song. My songs do not have... <laughs> uh, they don't. I don't do scales. You understand? So in 1992... When I left Detroit, and I'm glad I did. That makes it twice I left Detroit. Uh, they don't want me there. Okay, I, I won't come back. I'll have to go back and get some of my stuff if I ever do. But look at me, man. This is how I live, man. Just like this. Out on the streets. I got a, I got a place to sleep, thank God. And little else. I eat off the EBT menu, and I don't take any shit anymore. Not for many of these guys. They don't have any talent this is what i'm telling you i'm being attacked by obsequious philistines that they call archons so i was talking about internet indoctrination so what they try to do is all these alleged geraldo skins they're all about uh the rothschild family and so they all equate everything to that this is all anti-semitic this is anti-jewish uh this is like this is what they're all about. And it, I find it really fascinating that these Nazis in World War II made people shave their heads and get tattoos. And now after the Geraldo skins in the 1980s, don't forget, that's why I call them Geraldo skins. This is before American History X. They shave their heads and get tattoos. And they're supposed to be the big bad Nazis. I mean, okay, this is just bizarre to me. This is just flagrantly ridiculous. And this is part of the targeting. And that's why I'm telling you. People who targeted me were allegedly liberal people. 
and I didn't even vote in, for a Republican. I haven't voted for a Republican since the 1980s. And is there any proof? Is there going to be any proof? I don't know. There's probably no proof of, of, of anybody voting anywhere. If they're going to, uh, the state of Michigan is going to lose my uh, uh, medical records. Part of me writing my second book, which is called I, Son, that's my last name, Ison, I-S-O-N. My first book's called Two-Legged Animal. I'm getting ready to put that up on Amazon once again. It'll probably be buried, just like my channel. I don't care. I keep going. Yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little hyped. I'm a little angry today. It's been brutal here. The weather is brutal. I, I, I wake up late. I'm really cold. I'm freezing to death. I'm in this. I'm in, I'm in this tent city, and I can see it happening, man. I can see it. I don't use drugs or alcohol, but you have to understand why people do. You have to understand that people don't have any support in their own family. I couldn't even carry on a conversation with anyone in my family. And here I was being tortured. And I had to figure it out all by myself. And the police department were behind it. People at the police department. And I became part of a, a fraternal organization to say, hey, man, ba -ba -ba -ba, easy, man. This shit was a... I was a shoplifter in... Not shoplifter, but... I did things in Las Vegas so I could get stories. And still, my mom goes to the hospital in... 20 whatever it was 19 and they come up with this trope the uh, EMS people about my mom losing her purse they continue this trope about a stolen purse no purse was ever stolen this is what I'm trying to tell you it's all based on lies and innuendo I write about it in my book called two-legged animal and uh, I just find it truly truly sad that you know my stuff gets buried I don't get any family support I don't get any support from the punk rock scene when I'm a fucking songwriter. This is why I love Mark Lanigan. Did you guys know that Mark Lanigan, I believe, he started putting out records on 4AD. Look at Mark Lanigan's early career. He was part of this whole grunge explosion, which came from punk rock, guys. This didn't come from metal. Metal heads have this low IQ trope about them and we knew this as punk rockers we wanted to be a little bit more sophisticated we wanted more music from Europe we listened to a wide variety of music where metalheads only listen to metal and around the time that I left Detroit in the 1990s that's what was going on this kid Clifton I was working with who turned out to be a turncoat who was probably behind cranking this algorithm him along with James Kenneth Graham uh, these guys at Disconnected Records, they all started getting into this metal. Metal, to me, barely has any melody. It doesn't have any melody to me. I don't play metal. In my book, Two-Legged Animal, I have a chapter called Sound Scam. There was a electronic device called Sound Scan. This is the rise of Nirvana. This is the rise of that. Okay, and they were able to say, hey, no, look at the bands that are actually selling compared to me reporting because somebody from Arista Records calls my store and tells me to put Paul A. Abdul up on the charts. Look what's really selling. And this reality, this truth broke through the lies and it created this musical movement. This is what I'm trying to tell you. This is why I'm trying to break my truth through the lies, whatever lies there are. I mean, I know part of it is me internalizing some things, right? But I'm giving you my story. Why? Because I don't think it's okay for kids not to know who their grandfather was. I don't think that's okay. I don't think it's okay for African Americans to run around thinking that they all came are here as the sons and daughters of slaves. I don't think that's okay. Number one, because you don't know. You just don't know. There was a lot of African Americans here before the slave trade. To sit here and say that they weren't, you're a goddamn liar. There's no way for you to know. 
There's tons of things out here that we don't know. So I wrote a book. It's called Two-Legged Animal. I'm going to put that up on Amazon. I was fired from Amazon. I did tell this kid I was going to whoop his ass, but I said it in a very clever way. I said, let's go down to Burger King and see if you can knock the crown off my head. That's what I said, <laughs> right? So again, that's going to be their word against mine, right? Well, you, you were threatening people. This is what I'm trying to tell you. I was definitely 100% targeted. I'm targeted by both African Americans and uh, these alleged, alleged white people who don't really know what they are. And I just find it truly, truly sad uh, living in this day and age, still having to kind of come to grips with that. You should be able to put all that kind of stuff behind you and move on. I know I have. I've moved on physically. I'm out in California, finally. I'm working on uh, an on-demand television series called Linoleum Blown Apart. I'm trying to catch more series now. I'm trying to kind of catch up. I can only watch, you know, uh, you know, like a trailer or a teaser for a new television show. There's so much stuff out there. There's so many more outlets right now. And I don't want my stuff to be about race. I want people from different ethnicities to be in this property, to be a part of this property, but that's not what it's about, right? So you have Walter and Lionel. And they're the reincarnations. But Lionel's obsessed with Napoleon and Walter's both, both obsessed with Napoleon. Now, Lionel knows about Walter, but they don't know that each other is each other. I'm sorry. <laughs> However, right? That they could be the reincarnation of each other. This is an ethereal, ethereal dream state that we're going to vacillate through. And we'll vacillate into the seven films of Walter von Waldspritzer, right? And so he's based on a little bit on um, Cecil B. DeMille. Take a look at Cecil B. DeMille's life as well. Um, you know, he came up in early cinema. He had to fight his way. He made all these great films. And then he gets kicked out of his studio. Well, he's got to go to another studio. Then he's got to round up more money, right? Uh, and, and, and kind of build up this way. And this, this is what I'm uh, trying to tell you. Like, they ran Roman Polanski out of town. There is no doubt. And it's really sad and tragic that they did that. But look what he does. He goes over to Europe. He can work over there. He has a lot more freedom over there. Maybe he built up some studios over there. What did Stanley Kubrick do? He got the hell out of here. He didn't want to come back. He stayed over in England and started making films, right? So what spooked him? What scared him? He was kind of a paranoid person. We all know that. We hear these stories. I'm telling you, they ran a guy named Owen Benjamin out of town here, right? And a couple other people left because of the last election cycle. What did they do to me? They targeted me, utilizing the Facebook app. And it was people that I knew. And I was, before I knew it, I was making all these bizarre videos. Like I was afraid for my life. They heighten your state. You become, in, uh, you get into a heightened state. You understand? The only heightened state I ever want to be in is what I'm in today, which is caffeine. <laughs> I had a brutal caffeine headache uh, yesterday. Uh, you could see I drift through my consciousness. Right? I'm not a drug user at all. But I don't think there's anything wrong with it. There are aspects, there are synthesized aspects of illegal drugs that are all part of legal drugs. <laughs> I told you, being indoctrinated by the internet, how do you know what I'm uh, 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 deciphering when I look at something? How do you know? How do you know what I'm getting out of it? This is what I'm trying to show you. I think in a different way. I pull things that other people might might not grasp out of something. I'm entitled to speculate and form a hypothesis. I'm entitled to that. That's using my discernment. 
we're not animals. We use our frontal lobe. So with the rise of kundalini yoga, right? That's using, that's trying to align your chakra, what's known as your chakra. And your chakra is part of Semitic religions. They talk about your chakra. They talk about it in the Indo-European language that goes from basically Russia all the way down to India. So you could see this, all this rich information that's out there. So if I'm watching something, how do you know what I'm pulling from it? How do you know that I'm being quote unquote indoctrinized? They don't. They're only making capital A-S-S umptions. And then they attack you through your device. Uh, they cause confusion. They cause hypertension. And can it cause death can it cause you to, to hurt somebody I already explained to you how gang life works they harass you they harass you they harass you and then before you know it you actually attack somebody who doesn't have anything to do with it the reason I'm telling you this is because I'm 56 years old I spent time out on the streets and God willing eventually I'll have a, a decent job uh, be part of a decent family and have a decent roof over my head. Thank you very much for watching my show. I appreciate it more than you'll ever know.